Well, I think I filled this one too full. I shouldn't have pushed the extra large button on my coffee maker. Anyway, while I am trying to get all of these little pieces of masking tape off of the top of these little tiny pieces that we wanted to not lose the details on. I want you to watch what I would be doing if I had of got the Pontos detailing kit. Now I did know that there was some of this sort of thing that had to be done. Oh, I don't need my, my knife. But I didn't realize that there was so much. Now I'm going to say something here that I'm probably going to get into trouble for saying because I'm sort of speaking uh, without really knowing for sure. But I'll bet you that there is an awful lot of these 200 scale uh, ships that have been, uh, uh, you know, bought with, and, the, and people have got, the, the modeler has got the Pontos add-on kit as well. <clears throat> and I'll bet you there are, are far more unfinished ships uh, than there are finished. Uh, I think that in all likelihood, I know for myself, if I had have got that kit, I would have probably become just too overwhelmed with, as one of the viewers put it, all the mind-numbing photo etch. I mean, this is, uh, this is taking enough time as it is here. Now, did I miss any? Okay, I think that's it. Now, as I mentioned before, all of these little hinges and levers and what have you on the top here, they're not uh, partially covered over by the deck tan. Yes, I would far sooner have something like this, all finished and in its case, than something that was maybe museum quality, but nowhere near completed. Now, one of the viewers has informed us that these things here are called gun tubs. So this is a tub. Well, I guess it sort of looks like a tub. Anyway, I've gone around all of this stuff on the entire part here, and I'm noticing there's the odd place where I should touch it up. Now, I don't want to repaint everything, like for instance right here, I don't think it needs it. Well, maybe here there's a little place it does. Anyway, I'm just going to run around now and, and touch up places like this where it's uh, too much plastic is showing through and it's obviously not weathering anymore. It's a case of the modeler didn't put on enough paint. I don't want to do it too long or I'm going to be dissolving yesterday's paint. Okay. Yeah, there's probably 20 or 30 other little places like that now. Okay, I do believe when this dries it's going to sort of blend in. I know that if I put on my magnifying hood or even my strong reading glasses I'm going to be finding stuff. But I just put on my normal reading glasses and anything that didn't just jump right out at me I'm going to leave it. You know there's no end to it. The closer we get the more we're going to see problems. Well, well we're not going to be sticking our nose right on the deck. I hope. 
And now I don't want people getting me wrong either. I don't want people thinking that I'm just going to be satisfied with the mediocre in this build. I will do my reasonable best. Um, yeah, it's not going to be mediocre. It's going to look good. I'm hoping that a year, year and a half from now, when the hood is in the case, it's going to look as good as the Bismarck. Maybe even better. Well, it's good anyway. Now, before we bring the hull over here and pull the masking tape off of it, so that we can see if this piece here is going to mate up properly, and we'll talk about that in a minute, I was noticing when I was moving this around how incredibly late it is. And if you remember, I was saying something about, you know, monocoat for a flying model airplane and so on. And I was just wondering, this stuff here, uh, it wasn't that expensive, and there's a lot of this. Like, what, I don't know how many feet long this is when it's rolled out, and then it's like 18, 20 inches wide. So there's a lot of this stuff. And if it would shrink when it's heated, it would actually make good covering for an indoor flying model. Um, just a thought. I tend to talk about what I'm thinking about at the time, but there is very little stretch involved here. Like when I pull it out taut, it, it doesn't want to keep on going like a rubber band. Or, you know, or like the plastic on a, a shopping bag or something like that. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get our, our uh, hull over here. and I'm just going to save this. Experiment with it later. Okay, let's try and keep everything in everybody's field of view here and try not to get my fingers in everybody's view. scratch anything here. Turn it around and take it off the other side now.
This is kind of like a reptile shedding its skin, isn't it? spray got on there. Now mind you, I did know that I was going to have to be, you know, going around the, the top of the gunnel. Okay, let's uh, get the rotator set up and we'll have a nice close look at it. Noticing a little bit of that white putty is showing through here, but we did pretty good. Now there had been some concern that when we try to match this part on the top here, it may not fit well here. And there is a tiny gap there. But nothing serious. Okay. Yeah, I would say that for the for the most part this is going to fit okay. Well, it's about 10 after 3 in the afternoon here. And if I don't hurry up and get this uploaded, well, we're just not going to have it uploaded in time. So, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.